I'm Michael Lawless. I'm Clinical Associate Professor at the University of Sydney. I'm an ophthalmologist and ophthalmic surgeon, and I work at Vision Eye Institute in Chatswood and Bondi Junction. And I'm here today to talk about myopia. Myopia, short-sightedness, nearsightedness, they all mean the same thing. You will have read, for sure, because it's in the lay press as well as in the medical press, that there is an epidemic of short-sightedness. Well, who cares? Why, why would it matter that there's an epidemic of short-sightedness? The reason it matters is this. Short-sightedness is just some, not someone who's minus two. A person who's minus two, they're blurry in the distance, but they function quite well in an office setting. They put their glasses on. If they want to play sport, they wear their contact lenses. That's no big deal. So you think, well, what's the fuss about a bit of short-sightedness becoming increasingly widespread in the community? The thing is this. The reason people are short-sighted is because their eyeball is lengthening. And it's a progressive thing in a lot of people. And if the eyeball lengthens, you become much more short-sighted and it leads to consequences for the health of the eye. For example, people who are significantly short-sighted are more at risk, not just of having really bad vision without their glasses or contact lenses. They're more at risk of cataract, of retinal detachment and tears, and they're more at risk of glaucoma because as the eyeball lengthens, it becomes a pathological state. Now, not everybody who starts with a little short-sightedness will move to that pathological state, but a significant minority will. And anything you can do to reduce the progression of short-sightedness or stop it occurring is a good thing. For that reason, it stops it becoming pathological, but it's also good for the person. It's much better to be minus one or minus two than it is to be minus six. Because at minus six or minus eight, minus 10, it's hard if you're not short-sighted to work this out, but it's actually hard to wear glasses at those levels. You've actually really committed to wearing contact lenses and not everybody can wear contact lenses. Lifestyle implications for the individual, it's got health implications for society, and, and obviously short-sightedness also excludes some people from some jobs. Working in the military, uh, there's a variety of jobs where a certain level of short-sightedness is unacceptable. So what's new? What's, what's known now is that myopia is increasing and it's increasing because of the increase of near work. Not just iPhones, but it's iPads, it's not just Apple stuff, it's a lot of life for young people now is up close. And it's that close work which drives the development and the progression of short-sightedness. And for example, the stats in Singapore, and Singapore is the home of this because they are, because of their ethnicity and, and genetic factors, they have a lot of short-sightedness. If you're six years old in Singapore, you have about a 25% chance of being short-sighted. If you're 18 years of age in Singapore, your chance of being short-sighted is a little over 80%. Now, Australian rates are not that high, but ours are increasing just as they, theirs have been increasing. So what is known now, which wasn't known before, is that the rate is increasing. The second thing, more exciting, is that it's now possible that to, to reduce the progression of short-sightedness. And that came about because of a bunch of studies, the what are called the ATOM studies based in Singapore, and they go back nearly 20 years. They used atropine, just atropine drops. They dilate the pupil, but cycloplegias the patients, are, they're, they're blurry, they can't see in the distance and they're light sensitive, but it limits the progression of short-sightedness. So what the ATOM study did was, they, did, they tried different doses of atropine to see whether it could slow the progression. And what they found was, which was interesting, the really, they tried three different doses and the lowest dose, which they used as like a pseudo placebo, and this is a randomized control study, the pseudo placebo was just as effective as the higher doses, and that's 0.01%. And this is a study where they use the drops daily for two years, they go off the drops for a year, and then they go back on the drops for two years. So these are five year studies. And they showed you have about a 50% chance of reducing the progression of short sightedness with this low dose atropine. So that in itself is really exciting. And, and it means that you've got to approach short sightedness now, not in the old way whereby if you're seven or eight years of age, you, you, you're becoming short-sighted. In the old days, you just get a pair of glasses, you correct the error, and you correct it increasingly as the years go on. 
That's no longer standard of care. And there's, there's debate going on in, within the profession about how this should be dealt with. But you've got to say, well, this is probably now in this individual child, a, a, a condition which where we can slow the progression so that they don't, don't reach a pathological state. And it's, it's low dose atropine. It's also led to other therapies and different sorts of glasses, bifocal glasses, uh, glasses with different optics, and that's still being worked out. Multifocal contact lenses now have a role in slowing progression. So there's a bunch of things which, uh, uh, which can be done to prevent that child from, from developing pathological myopia. And it's not clear, it's not uh, certain what the best way of dealing with it, and, and not all children will be helped, but a significant number will. So the mindset around short-sightedness is from something that was sort of boring and just accepted is now something where this is a condition which can be dealt with more effectively and the therapies are being slowly sort of worked out as to what the right way to deal with individual children are. And it may be that some can wear a contact lens when they're 10 years of age, some can't, others can't tolerate drops but will be in different forms of glasses. But there are therapies out there and a set and forget approach is no longer acceptable for young people with, uh, with short-sightedness.